What's up, it's Matt. In this video, I wanna talk about five business models that are looking extremely lucrative to start in 2020. And these are business models that you may not have heard of yet, so you're definitely gonna to want to pay attention because especially on YouTube, people like to put businesses into these little tiny boxes like start Shopify or start affiliate marketing. So you may not be aware of some of these opportunities and I think these are some of the best ones out there. So no fluff, let's just get straight into the first business model. First up, Airbnb. And there are definitely different models for Airbnb business models, but there's one in particular that has been emerging that just, I can't seem to stop thinking about it. And I definitely want to get into it. And it seems very, very scalable and much, much less investment than, you know, buying a house. So potentially not hundreds of thousands of dollars needed, at least in a place like California, to start with this model. And the model I'm referring to has a few different names, but I usually see it referred to as Airbnb arbitrage. And the core difference between this model and your traditional buying a place or an apartment and renting it out on Airbnb is that in this model, you don't actually own the place. You find rentals that you can arbitrage on Airbnb. So hypothetical numbers, let's say you can find an apartment that rents for $3,000 per month, and you find that this property on Airbnb could potentially pull in $5,000 per month. Well, now your startup costs are only basically first month's rent, security deposit, and some furniture to get you up and running on something that is immediately cash flowing at quite a high ROI if you do the math. I mean, to be able to invest ten, twelve thousand dollars and immediately potentially be netting thousands of dollars per month if things go well. I'm sure there's a whole spectrum, but that is a very, very, very high ROI. And you can quickly see how one property could very quickly pay for the next property and pay for the next property and the next one. And there are people that I have looked into that have hundreds of listings on Airbnb without owning any of them. And one of the obvious downsides is you're not building equity in the homes or apartments the way you would be with buying, but that's the trade-off of not having to put a 20% down payment to be able to put that property on Airbnb. And of course, also, you have to do this the right way where you're legally able to and you're making an agreement with the landlord. You're not just renting an apartment and putting it on Airbnb because you will get kicked out if that's not agreed upon. And I think that would probably be the main difficulty is getting landlords to say yes. And while you're not building equity in the apartments or the houses, something that I think even the people doing this are missing is that this is a business that could be sold, in my opinion, because you're basically building an investment portfolio in a way. And if you build this sustainable thing that has managers running these properties, and it's all just pure cash flow, you could sell the whole roll up of all of the management of your properties, like an LLC that has all of these rental agreements and you have everything streamlined with cleaners and all of that. And you sell the whole thing as just a cash flowing profitable business at a multiple of probably three years profit or more, I would guess, maybe even more in a business like this. Side note, this one also really appeals to me because I think it could be amazing from a lifestyle perspective. And as a business owner, as an online entrepreneur, I'm always looking for lifestyle hacks. And I think of myself as wanting to potentially have really sweet Airbnbs in several of my different favorite places in the world and be able to you know block off a month here or there and also just enjoy it, which would take out of the cash flow, but major life improvement. And I'm no expert in this, I'm only looking into it, but I have been watching the Airbnb automated YouTube channel and it's pretty solid, so you can check that out. Next up is a business model that costs almost nothing to start. So this is a great one to get yourself off the ground and start building up capital to roll into other things. It's not the most scalable, but you can do very well with it. And like I said, it costs very little to start up. And what I'm talking about here is reselling. And I did this for many years before rolling it into businesses that would be more scalable, but this is essentially buy low, sell high. You find stuff locally, you find stuff on Craigslist, you find stuff on eBay, you find stuff anywhere that you can buy that maybe you have a specific set of knowledge where you know about cameras or clothes or phones or skateboards or snowboards, I don't know. And you can find that you know this thing is actually worth 100 bucks more, I can get it cheap, this person's desperate to sell it, I can list it properly and I can flip it and make that profit. And you know, you could start this with free items, potentially, Gary Vee has talked about that. Or you could buy an item for 20 bucks that you can sell for 40 bucks, or you could find an item for 50 bucks that you could sell for 100 bucks, or you could buy a freaking 
car or boat or house and flip it for hundreds of thousands. Obviously this does go at, this is, there's multiple levels to this. <laughs> Downsides, I'm not crazy about the scalability. That was why I ultimately stopped it. I was running around uh, selling phones mainly for a few years and then I was selling vintage watches. I'm very into watches. So I was scouring eBay all the time looking for things that were not really represented. They didn't know what they had. And yeah, it's just very time consuming and not particularly scalable. But the upside is that this is something you could probably start today. <laughs> and if you're interested in this, I'll give a shout out to my wife's YouTube channel, which I'll link in the description. She's been doing eBay and reselling for a while and it has been making some videos about that. So check that out. Third business model. This one's interesting because it's both lucrative and scalable and something you could potentially start with very, very, very little, but it does require a bit more of a skill set. And this is to start an agency. This has been popularized by Ty Lopez, SMMA, Social Media Marketing Agency, but there are many types of agencies from Amazon PPC agencies to I, I talked about this a, a little bit in a recent video about other ways to make money surrounding the Amazon opportunity, but you know, you can agency anything to use that as a verb. And there's a ton of opportunity here because your clients are going to be business owners and people that are making money. Maybe it could be influencers, anything and people that opportunities that you see that you could sprinkle something special on it and make them more money. That is something that is high, high, high value and something that people are willing to pay for. You know, companies pay millions of dollars to advertising agencies to run Super Bowl commercials, whatever. I mean, that's at one very high level, but you know, there are anywhere from getting a $1,000 a month retained client or even $500 a month to run a company's Instagram, something like that, start racking those up. And that is also a business that is scalable and sellable too. And the downsides being you have to have a skill set and you have to be able to sell it. You have to convince people that you are worth their investment. And I do think that initial grind of getting those first few clients, especially could be very, very difficult. But I still think this is one of the best business models out there going into 2020 and in the past and probably in the future because you can just rack up clients and potentially, you know, have a whole team doing the actual deliverable work for you on behalf of a client over time and scale this up, you know, sell it, have new skill sets, new categories that you are an expertise on, you know, maybe you're doing video and then you're doing Instagram and then you're doing whatever else and you can have different offerings to your same client base or expand it to new ones. And before the fourth business model, real quick, if you're enjoying this video, please do the YouTube thing and click all the stuff, you know, leave comments, like button, smash subscribe, smash like, subscribe, whatever, bell, just click all that stuff. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and potentially pushing this video out to more people. Okay, so fourth business model. This is to start a physical product company. And I sort of teased this in the intro that people like to say Shopify or affiliate marketing or Amazon or whatever else, drop shipping. And what I wanna talk about here is creating a brand of product because I probably think that's, I definitely think that's the main angle to go within selling physical products. But I am not saying Amazon, I'm not saying Shopify, I'm not saying drop shipping. I'm saying building your own brand with a long-term approach to selling on multiple platforms. And obviously if you've been watching my channel a while, you know that this has been the main topic over the years. If you're new here, there's a lot of Amazon specific, building your own brand specific content on the channel in the past that you can definitely check out. But the real opportunity here is to build a product brand, build a product company, right? And that's the way I've always talked about starting on Amazon. And I think that still is the opportunity to leverage platforms like Amazon or to leverage Kickstarter and then bring it to Amazon to get selling on Amazon and then to start thinking about selling your product on your own Shopify store and running social media and all of that to your own store. And to also be thinking about what is my strategy for getting this product into the, the store shelves offline, you know, onto retail stores, because that is still a major, major, major component of selling physical products. You know, we get so excited by the sexy online marketing stuff, but there are so many products sold off the store shelves. And this is something that you can still do remotely and relatively hands off by selling massive quantities of inventory in bulk. So thinking about that, that Amazon, that direct and that wholesale 
to other retailers angle is kind of this the trifecta of building a real product brand. And you know, so many old school companies are just going out of business every single day from storefronts too, but also just outdated brands that don't have any direct connection to their customers. I mean, all you have to do is get the first ad on Instagram to see some old school product being positioned in a new way. There's a ton of opportunity to basically refresh every physical product out there in the world and do it better, do it in a new tone and just do it the 2020 way. Okay, so the fifth model and then there is kind of a bonus opportunity after that. So don't be too ready to click out, but this fifth one is to produce content and stick with me for a second. Obviously there's YouTube, there's all these different content, we hear about it, We have you probably have an Instagram, whatever, but I think there's a real opportunity that's just maturing, which is to really take content very, 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 very seriously. Maybe have, maybe team up with some people and produce very high level specific content in any niche. It doesn't have to be about business or making money or what you see me making content like here. And my content is not even really at the level that I'm imagining it in, in what I'm talking about. I mean, there's such a higher level of really making things professional and basically just starting shows and starting channels and starting these authorities for specific types of content from, from business to news to cooking to guitars. I don't know, but just very high level tailored content, I think is, an, is a massive opportunity with so many ways to monetize it and probably the maybe even the most long-term thinking strategy of all of these because when you have your own platform, there are just so many ways to monetize it from physical products to agency to affiliate marketing to basically a combination of almost all of these that you could do, maybe not Airbnb specifically, unless you're making content about real estate or Airbnb or whatever, I don't know. But there's a lot of ways to go about this. And I'm not just talking about YouTube channels here. A really interesting example is thehustle.co. They have an amazing newsletter literally an email newsletter. And this thing is only a couple years old, I believe. And they're now pulling in well into the eight figures per year, which is insane for an email newsletter because they can have ad spots and they can have, they have a premium newsletter and group thing. And there's so many angles when you have this core audience and they do it by having a team of writers and making this highly curated content that is exciting to open and read. It's not just another spam in your inbox, but it's something you want to sign up for. So that's what I'm talking about is this highly tailored, curated, high quality content is attention grabbing because right now there's so much noise. So when you can make very specific tailored content, there's a massive opportunity there. And there was a great podcast breaking down the hustle. Uh, it was on the Mike Dillard podcast or the Mike Dillard show, uh, which is one of my favorite business podcasts, but I'll link that down below to the episode with Sam Parr, the founder of the hustle. It's incredible and will definitely blow your mind into the opportunity of this kind of refresh of how we're thinking about content and monetizing it. So hopefully it came through in the way that I talked about these, that it wasn't just drop shipping and affiliate marketing. For example, with building the audience, you can plug these things into it. So that's kind of the way I think you should think about business models, which brings me to the, the bonus model, which is think about business models that don't fit into any of these boxes. You know, especially in these YouTube spaces, it gets very, very segmented. Shopify, Amazon, drop shipping, real estate. And you know, give yourself the creativity to just come up with novel ideas too, because some of the best business models are not 2020 business models. They're just interesting novel ideas that create new things in software forms and physical forms in, you know, retail locations. You know, think about the biggest companies out there. Think about the platforms we talked about. Think about Airbnb. Airbnb was a novel idea. Airbnb was not just like, hmm, what should I sell on Amazon? It was a novel, unique opportunity. So I hope these got you thinking. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you might be running with. And if that fourth one about Amazon and building a brand is interesting to you, definitely check out a lot that is already on my channel. And if you're really looking to dive in with that, I do have a course. It's a program that runs you A to Z, getting started launching your brand through Amazon, and then also kind of laying that foundation to move on from there and really establish it as a long-term thing. You can check that out in the description as well as a bunch of other tools and resources and things like that. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Definitely do smash that like button. Feel free to also follow me on Instagram uh, just to see what I'm up to. And yeah, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you and see you soon.